actually, we're live. Yes. Right. We have Paleo Boss. Congratulations, by the way, on being uh, uh, honored as the biggest paleo ambassador by Paleo Magazine. Yeah, like how weird is that? I'm like so humbled by this gesture and so surprised that's, that that's a big deal. Hell yeah, it is. Every Whole Foods, I mean, everywhere they carry that magazine. I mean, that, <laughs> that's insane. That's, I mean, that's, that's a big accomplishment and obviously something uh, to be proud of. Um, so I'm actually really stoked because you and I met, first met at the Paleo FX uh, conference yeah. just a few weeks ago, and we are both grinding it out. I, I just, you know, was just busy. You were just a fan favorite there. I wanted to leave the booth and uh, go check everything out. But we, we got a chance to stop and talk for a little bit. And, um, but it's, I'm, I'm really getting to know right now, uh, getting to know your story right now, just as my, you know, just as the following is my following is as well. So thank you so much for joining me. And, um, if, if you, uh, just kind of want to, man, you have so many things when you, I don't want, I'll let you share. So if you <laughs> would like to just, uh, to tell, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, well, right now I'm coming to you from beautiful Colorado, I have to tell you. Um, I currently tour all over the country. And the reason why I do that is because at the age of 23, I got very sick. And at 24, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. By the time I was 37 years old, I became legally disabled from the effects of MS on my body. And by the time I was in my early to mid 40s, I lost the ability to use both of my hands. I had no feeling on the left side of my body. And I pretty much blew through my entire life savings, taking drugs and paying for treatments that insurance didn't cover. I mean, one drug for the treatment of MS is $2,500 a month, and that's the average cost. And most insurance doesn't cover that. So, you know, in America, most therapies are drug therapies. Um, I even left my home in Philadelphia. I'm a full-blooded Italian. I left everyone I knew to move to California because I have body temperature regulation issues. So I moved to Venice Beach where like the weather is perfect. As you know, you live in the LA area. Um, and at first it seemed like the smartest thing I had ever done because I really started doing well and you know became a yoga instructor. And then in typical MS fashion, it just decided game over. And it really debilitated me to the point that my life was really almost not worth living. And the second largest and youngest population and institutions in America have MS. And I was truly facing that because I ran out of money, uh, healthcare. I mean, only on a good day, I could feed myself, dress myself and use the ladies room. I had full-time help people living with me. And I have a daughter who's now 30. And at that time she was in college and my quality of life was just terrible. If I wasn't a mom, I didn't have any joy. So as any rational human being, Andy, I decided to go to Burning Man, which I'm sure you know what Burning Man is. <laughs> I do. You know, it's a, but I, I mean, that's, that's on my bucket list for sure. It's a, an event in the desert, in the playa, in the middle of Nevada, that basically is a no consumerism event. So other than ice, you can't buy anything. And it's a no judgment um, event as well. And they build a temple. And most people go to Burning Man to like rave all night long and, you know, have wild times. I went to see about taking my own life. And about the fourth day in the temple, it like hit me like a brick in my forehead that maybe the reason why I was as sick as I was had something to do with the way I lived my life. And it wasn't just that I got MS and none of the treatments were working. Maybe I needed to look beyond drugs and what the doctors were telling me. So I came home from Burning Man and I literally locked myself in the house for a year and just started questioning everything from why I wake up by an alarm clock that scares me. Like most people do that. It's like, uh, like who wants to wake up that way? Don't you want to wake up like, good morning, how are you? Or maybe some Tibetan bells or something. I don't know. You know, I just wake up on my own now. I wake up with the sun. But I mean, really everything in my life was pretty toxic. I had to really start taking ownership for disease. And in our healthcare system, that is not normal. Usually you go to the doctor, you have something wrong. They say something's not working. We have a drug. It'll fix that gap. And that's what you do. And I tried all that. I was on the board of directors of the National MS Society. I was a multimillionaire. I was connected and it still wasn't working. So when I went to Burning Man, I had nothing but desperation and came back and realized that my life was toxic. And I had already been moving my body since like the age of 18. So movement 
probably sustained me a really long time. And I still move my body every day. And then I learned how to love myself. I went to the Zen Center in Mount Baldy and studied with monks and studied Buddhism and did silent meditative retreats. So I already had the self-love stuff down by the time I went to Burning Man. But food, I had tried lots of food and different ways of eating and nothing helped until I started a paleo diet. And then to make it even more successful for me is I became a walls warrior. Dr. Terry Walls has the walls protocol. Yeah. Which is basically a paleo diet eating nine cups of fruits and vegetables. So I started doing that. And as of today, I started that in 2012. As of today, I'm the most healed person in the world who has MS using exclusively diet and lifestyle. I take no drugs. I see no doctors. I not only stop the progression, but I've reversed every symptom that MS brought to my body. Wish you could see. I got good. Look at that. My look at that. goosebumps. That gave me chills. I'm serious. I still have chills, and it's my life. Like I keep thinking, if I say it, it'll like penetrate my being. But I just wanted to stop what MS was doing. I never thought that I could reverse damage. And so, based on everything that I knew, I decided in 2016 I was living in my beautiful. Um, rent controlled apartment in Santa Monica. I was at the beach every day, living the life. And I decided to make myself voluntarily homeless and drive around in my Fiat. And I agreed to live in any stranger's house that wanted help for free. And I did that for two years. And then last year I put the mission out that I wanted some sort of a home on wheels so that it would break down any barrier to entry. And last year, the community I serve in conjunction with now we're up to like 23 vendors. Um, they bought me a van. We built it out, which is was on Paleo FX's floor. I live in a van and I drive around. Again, um, I just pull in your driveway right now. I'm parked on a Denver, Colorado city street and I'll sleep on the street and I'll do whatever I can to help you. All my work is for your donation. And I think that's why Paleo Magazine bestowed that huge honor on me. So you've been doing this is year two. You're into it. I just started year three. three okay. And I, I have to tell the people out there, I mean, your boot, you were just flooded and it's all love. I mean, so you just have to be, I, I know kind of the, the, the feeling we have people, customers from all around the country, all around the world actually coming by the booth. And how rewarding is it? How fulfilling is it to have people that you may have contacted via email or you helped so much through your story, right? Right. Uh, I mean, I just, I remember looking over there and I had this the, uh, customer that came by, and she's like, if there's one person that you need to meet, it's her right over there. And she points to you. And I'm like, where is she? She's like, oh, she's inside right now, but you got to go in there. And that just, wow. Right off the bat. I mean, you have this, you know, very bubbly personality. So I, uh, I'm glad I did. And but man, what a story. Are you kidding me? Wait, so, uh, so bless Dr. Walls's heart for helping you out. And bless your heart, obviously, for following through on that. But I, yeah. so, I really, I mean, that was the catalyst, right? It was, just- it was a missing piece. I mean, I have to tell you, I live a very conscious life. So I'm a minimalist. Uh, everything I do, you know, what I wash my clothes in, what I put on my skin, what I wash my face with, um, you know, the people I interact with, the communities that I socialize with, it is all very conscious. And food is is a key part. I mean, just last week, I accidentally self-poisoned. I had something that had rice and oats. And every MS symptom I had came back in like 24 hours. I'd never been so sick. And I thought, oh, I thought, is it altitude sickness? Because I was about 8,000 feet up. And I was like by a creek in nature, like the setting was ideal. But my body, it took me a little while to figure out what I had done. And It just goes to show you that food, I mean, where stress, yes, if I'm stressed, I might get tired or I might like lose a little bit of feeling or, you know, if I don't move my body, you know, my hips might be a little wonky, but food, make a mistake on food and my body literally reverts back to exactly how it was before when I was not healthy. So to me, although it was the last piece, it's a very important piece for sure. How frightening was that for you? I can't imagine. I'm not going to lie. I was really scared because I was in Buena Vista, Colorado in the middle of nowhere and trying to just like relax and unwind. And instead I was thinking, should I call an ambulance? Is it that serious? Like I just didn't really know what to do. And, you know, I just sort of toughed it out because, you know, I'm 55 and I live in a van and I, 
have MS. And sometimes I do, when I have situations like that, I'm like, are you crazy? Like, what are you doing? You know, I do have those moments. So I had one of those moments where I thought, I must be insane because here I am in the middle of nowhere, sick, living in a van, and this is not pleasant. Um, but the truth is the person I was going to see the next day, someone that I've served and been in her company uh, several times, she's 15, has spent her entire life in a wheelchair, has a debilitating disease that will eventually, you know, sadly take her life. Um, I have to tell you that that's what motivates me. So no matter how hard my life is, I serve and, you know, I, you know, that that's serving is, is just, there's no greater joy than to serve. And I serve all day, every day. That's what I do. I just go from house to house helping people. I mean, you're just, uh, that's like, what's, what's the word I like to call it? I, I'm about to cry. She's, yeah, I'm saying, <laughs> well, you know, Ashley, right. From paleo magazine. Oh, Ashley. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who doesn't love Ashley? So Ashley, yeah reached out to me and I hadn't met her. I didn't know. And, you know, Ashley's like a super badass, you know, she's like rock hard and like, you know, Ashley, like, so she, we do an interview. No, I don't know her at all when we do this interview and she starts crying. And then at the end of the interview, she's like, listen, I don't cry. And you made me cry. She like, and then when I met her, I was like, I made you cry. Like I couldn't believe that I made Ashley cry, but literally, um, yeah, I think a lot of people get emotional about my work because they're always like, really? That's what you do? And I feel like this is why I was born. Like, I really believe I was put on this earth to do what I'm doing right now. I feel like I'm living like what the, you know, my reason, my purpose, there's nothing I've been more sure of. Like I question if I've ever been a good mom, I try really hard, but I don't question that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And that that's, I mean, cause being the most healed person with MS isn't reserved just for me. I mean, we can all be healed from something. And a lot of times people just need like a cheerleading squad. So I'm like cheerleader. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, the, the impact, the, the, I mean, I've felt personally, it's so refreshing to hear that uh, because my, 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 the, the goosebumps and the, the, the feelings that I get are the, the feedback that I get or getting uh-huh. some, Accutane, right? Which is similar to your, you know, get, you know, you go through and you told me that you just clean out the house products, uh, refrigerator. You told me a little bit about, but just like kind of just straightening people out, putting like a night, you know, a nice way. And then, so what I do is, I mean, similar, but it, with, with whether it's products or diet or nutrition, it's, uh, you know, getting people off of Accutane and proactive or, or any type of really talks harsh product. I did that. Yeah. Wait, well, you were, uh, you had Accutane. Accutane. You were on that too? Yep. Oh man. I mean, because that's it, it. First of all, that destroys everything in its path. Um, the steroids that they gave me for MS made all these, I never had a problem with acne. They gave me all these like boils on my skin and that's what they gave you. Accutane, you literally are signing your life away because that stuff is so toxic. And still to this day, I can't have anything with ice. Like I have problems from Accutane still to this day. Wait, why, wait, you can't have ice? Like it, no, I can't deal with like anything. I'm super sensitive to cold and ice. So like everything is pretty much room temperature that I drink. And that's an Accutane that happened from Accutane. From, from destroying your gut biome? I don't know, but I can never, I mean, my gut's healthy now. After four years of being a faithful walls warrior, never cheating, never making a mistake. My gut is finally healed. I mean, my gut is like, I'm so proud of my gut. Yeah. Nice. So what are some of your tips for uh, maintaining that healthy gut? Cause that's everything. I mean, I had a, what I have the other night, Indian food with the non bread. Don't get me wrong. It was amazing. Right. Oh. I got in there the whole next day I was in this funk and I couldn't shake it. I had to go. Oh. Yeah. Man. I mean, it was delicious, but I mean, I knew what I was getting to do. That's on me for sure. But uh, I, I had to go to the gym and just sweat it out and shake sweat it, it out. out. Like I couldn't pinpoint what it was. It was the, the bread and the, the, whatever was in that, but it was, yeah, so I'll we'll have to find you a non paleo recipe. What's that? There's somebody has to have an, a recipe for non that's paleo. I bet with coconut flour or something, or I bet you probably like nom nom paleo or somebody would. Yeah, you know, like those real like recipe developers. Um, you know, for me, the the whole thing with food and is that I come out of at all of this through a self love lens. I mean, I know I have MS and that's what motivated me, but. There's two things, you know, my brand is paleo boss lady. Cause I'm Italian. I'm from Philly and I was born under the sign of Taurus. So 
I'm bossy. I mean, I just am. I'm bossy. I, I can't help it. And, you know, I, once I realized that food is what was like harming me and the people that make this stuff know it, then like you don't get to, you know, mess with me twice, you know? So I would never eat stuff like that because I just love myself too much too. And I also, you know, I, I just have a very strong will and it's like the system's not going to screw me twice because it took years away from me. You know, I was already moving my body. Yeah. The self-love stuff I had to work on and I really didn't get into that hardcore until my forties, but you know, I didn't need to lose 25 years of my life because of the food I was eating. If I knew what I was doing, I never would have been self poisoning. I, yeah. It's, so it's, man, it's, uh, it, you know, you find out more and more about hidden ingredients and certain, you know, just it, agendas to, you know, make profit, profit, profit. I mean, you and I are very aligned where it's just, I mean, I do it purely for the impact. I love having the lower, uh, you know, no corporate overhead watching over me. I mean, I have a team right. a board and, and that I, that I, that I do this with, but they know that's like, that's one area when I'm formulating products that's me. That's all me. Uh, and Your products I, are amazing. Thank you. They're thank like you. game changers. Your moisturizer and your cleanser. I mean, the moisturizer, I love the cleanser too, but the moisturizer I love because I always say it has guts. I mean, it literally, like I put it on this morning because I go to the gym in the morning. I work out and I shower at the gym. So mm -hmm. I'm like done my workout by like 7 a.m. So this has been on my face all day and I'm like, I, I'm, I'm really soft. Like it, I'm always touching my face because of how, how it feels from your moisturizer. It's just amazing. And I love your Lang Lang. That's my favorite essential oil. Oh, yeah. That's it, unbelievable by itself. I don't know why I didn't just sent that, sent my cleanser just with that. I got, I got so overwhelmed because I have so many uh, essential oils that I love. Like what about Palo Santo, uh, chamomile, sandalwood, obviously. I love sandalwood. Yeah, but the thing is, though, is when you combine, when you put too many home run hitters together, sometimes it kind of, I mean, it's good. Uh, and then I start adding violet, sweet orange. I mean, I, I mean there are oh. so many of them in there, and they're great, and they serve the skin. But I'm going to, I need to tweak that a little bit. But the thing is, I mean, you laying you laying, I mean, it could have just done it on it, you know, on its on its own. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, I would say that's one of my favorite. Yeah, that's one of my, uh, yeah, one of my three. When I make my mask, I go ylang ylang, lemongrass, uh, sweet orange, sometimes clary sage too. Oh, yeah. I love sweet orange. Clary says, I almost did this today with the mask on. I said to the people who I'm with right now, I'm like, should I do this Facebook Live with the mask on? I thought it would be funny for me to have like the mask and be like, look what I'm doing. Um, I, actually, I swear to you, I thought about doing that too, but I'm like, oh man, I don't really, this is the first time, you know, talking with her, you know, <laughs> and I have them on all, all the time because I'm around here, you know, I, I work from home and uh, my team comes over and we do our thing, but like, I don't have to be outside and that's, I go outside, get some sun, bake the mask in, which helps pull out nice. some and get some vitamin D in there too. Nice. So, I'm going to do that. Oh, it's awesome. I, so I want to tell you, we, we discussed this a little bit uh, at Paleo FX, but I, I want to be one of those companies. I want Alatur to be one of those companies that, that you know, helps you and, and sponsors oh, you. Oh, thank you. 100%. I'm all in. I love what you're doing. And uh, I, kind of, I kind of just want to be a part of it. You know what I mean? It, it's so And so if I can, you know, just give you products every month or whatever it is, I just want to be a part of it because I love what you're doing. Thank you. We'll definitely figure it out. And not that I'm counting, but in 16 days, I'll be back in California. Yay. Um, I know. I know. My daughter's in Costa Mesa, so that always pleases me. But I have, um, I'll be in LA. I'll be in Burbank, um, like Perfect. Toluca Lake. Isn't that where you are? I'm in Glendale, but Toluca Lake, okay. I, used to in, I used to live in Toluca Lake, and that's five minutes away. So, yeah, absolutely. my friend, uh, what he called? She's like, we're not going to be here and we need a house sitter. So I'm like, okay. And I, um, so yeah, so I'll be back. Cause I'm actually coming back for the idea conference, which is in San Diego, the end of June. Okay. And yeah, it's like they're, uh, what's that about? Where, um, it's 14,000 uh, fitness professionals and I'm going there, um, you know, just to, you know, it's health and fitness. Man, how did I not hear about these things? It's their national conference. I think you could probably even just get a pass to come down and check it out. It's like June, June 27th, like the last weekend of June. An idea and, conference? Yeah, IDEA, IDEA. They have like smaller regional ones, but this is their sort of 
you know, worldwide, big, big one. And it's, it's, it's fitness and health. So it would be like, you know, gym owners and nutrition, like that kind of, you know? Um, so yeah, so I'm coming back for that. And, um, just, you know, California is my heart. I mean, I love touring, but it's my home and I'm a beach girl. I got to get some, some sand between my toes, you know, to get me whole again. Yeah, I hear you. I'm actually going to Venice later on. Uh, I love that area. <laughs> But I love I love Glendale for some reason. I don't know why. I, I just it's it's underrated. Have you ever been to Glendale? I've never been to Glendale. My first time to Burbank was because when I lived in Venice, I couldn't drive because MS took my hands. And when I decided to do the tour, the day I moved from Santa Monica was the first time I ever drove to Orange County, and it was the furthest I drove. To think that I drive you know forty fifty thousand miles a year now in only three years is amazing. But I couldn't That's- drive. That, yeah, I was just, I mean, that first time driving had to be, did you have someone with you in the passenger seat? I mean, no, well, my, my dog, who I don't know if you met Gidge, but she's always with me. Oh, uh, I think I yeah, did. Little Gidge. But no, I um, just, I just did it. Um, you know, scared, I'm but kidding. now I'm not scared. Again, it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, man. I, that's well, you've a- overcome some great adversity too. I mean, I think, you know, you got to where you are through, you know, I'm going to say a tragic accident. I don't know. I mean, you could, you know, it changed your trajectory. And I feel like, you know, for people like me and you, um, it, uh, not a lot of people, you know, see a hole in something and then try and fill it. And that's why I have great respect for what you're doing. Because after I met you, I went home that night, you know, to my hotel room and I read, first of all, I was really amazed. I mean, to look at you, cause I mean, obviously you're extremely handsome and I'm like, Whoa, this man's face was like crushed. Mm-hmm. And I also love that, um, you know, you not only talk about, you know, your accident and how it brought you to this, but, you know, your family and and that part of healing. And, you know, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for the fact that you took that tragedy and you're changing lives with, you know, the products that you're doing. So we're, we're all kind of doing the same thing. And that's another reason why I love, I mean, our good friend, Dave Asprey and Bulletproof, like he was sick and, you, you know, like so many Dr. Terry Walls, like a lot of the people in the world that we're in are, you know, finding their calling through adversity and not everybody can turn such a negative into a give back. They could feel bad for themselves. And I'm grateful that you don't and I don't so that we can serve because your products do serve. Your booth had more men than (laughs) I've ever seen at a skincare line in my life. (laughs) That's, that's the thing. It's, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I just I remember going into spring training for baseball. I, I, I used to go to – I'll probably go back next year too uh, – to Arizona to spring training. I used to play baseball, and so my teammates are still playing. playing so I would go to the locker room and uh, you know, kind of just set up my little booth. I've been doing it for years now when I had one product and then two products, and then now we have a lot more. Mm-hmm. But uh, just going in there, you see the guy – I mean, they get sold suits, sold shoes, sold supplements, protein, you name it. But then uh, there I am with my little clay mask and a, a little small like demo booth and what, like terrible business cards and one horrible flyer. This is my first year. And I'm like, uh, like, what's this? I'm like, well, it's just, just clay. And it's all passion from there. You know what I mean? It's like, right. well, you got to hit them with the accident first. So you engage like, I don't know. What's up, what am I going to wear a clay mask for? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, you got to hit them with the accident, how it recuperates. So then they actually give you the time of day and then, and then, but the thing is, though, is the next year, the first year, the, the clay mask didn't exactly fly off the fly off the demo <laughs> tape. But when I came back with the moisturizer and I started explaining to the guys that, hey, you know, all this, the sun baking in, it's going to create fine lines and wrinkles. And, you know, you got to show them a good example of, a, you know, just counteract because I used to play and I had those and I counteracted a lot of those fine lines and wrinkles, not only through my products, but through diet, and through exfoliating and explaining, explaining the process of doing that. But um, it's, but the, they would start to come, you know, guys are more interested in skincare than, than they'd like to put off. An yeah, no, I saw it big time at your booth. I mean, the men were, you know, lining up and actually my one friend, Claire, her husband came over and he's like, I'm, I'm like addicted. I'm like a huge fan at Paleo FX. And there were two other guys there and they're like, oh yeah, we just loaded up. And I was like, wow, this is really, you know, that's very rare for a skincare line to, you know, be equally male and female. And, you know, I'm just grateful that we all, you know, we all get to use it no matter what sex we are. 
Yeah, it's it's fifty five forty five right down the middle. Uh, wow. Almost, yeah. Yeah, it really looks like that. I mean, that's a very rare. So you're obviously filling a huge need that a lot of people had. Uh, well, so I mean, it's it's like you said when you were talking about Dr. Rawls and and uh, Dave and, and just. When, when you when you get a second chance and you, you kind of get a chance to get your zest back, I call it zest, and, and you bounce back from something tragic, it's like this is all bonus. And so when yeah. you tap something, I don't really, I mean, I don't even, it's just it's, it, like you nailed it as far as just serving and helping. And uh, that's the most important thing when it really breaks down to you. I remember talking to a, a gentleman in, in Austin years ago, my first paleo effects actually. And this is how we were eating dinner late at night, and he was just like, we got, we got to talk about everything and, and his biggest piece of advice to me towards the end of our conversation was it ain't about you, you know? And yeah, it's just like, you know, but in a nice way, but right, you know, right. <laughs> but I asked him, he was like a sage, a like great dude. And he had a, like, you could tell he's, he's just, you know, experienced a lot. And that stuck with me for, uh, to this day. And just, you know, I, I feel like that's what he meant. Just, you know, it's, you know, help be of service. Cause right. really is what makes my heart full. And then if I get a kick out of it and I can help, I mean, it's a no brainer, right? I'm just going to continue to do that. And yeah. uh, I mean, it sounds like we're aligned. All we of are. It. We yeah. are. And I feel really, um, I just feel really grateful that a lot of what we're doing is also we're educating people along the way, you know, so that, you know, that it, it begins a, a whole lifestyle of questioning, you know? So it's like, wow, I never really thought about what I put on my skin, you know? When I go into people's homes, I'll say to them, you know, when I leave, I, you know, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer, but like what you're cleaning your clothes in, what you're using in your dryer, these are, you know, neurotoxins, these are carcinogens. Like, you know, you really need to get con, you know, conscious about anything that touches you at all, you know, from what you put on your skin to what you put on your clothes. You know, I just learned that cotton clothing, you know, I would buy, I buy everything cotton, but if it's not organic, there's pe so many more pesticides on cotton than any other fabric. Like I literally, because I wear cotton, I thought was a, the better alternative. I'm really wearing, you know, pesticides all over my body. So I feel that when you have products that are clean and, you know, by me touring and, and showing people what I know that we're helping them to learn to start to question their own life about everything from skincare to what they wash their clothes into the fabrics they're wearing to all of it. And that's how we can really create change, you know, by telling another person and by how we use our dollars and, you know, by doing these kind of Facebook lives where we can share, I feel like, you know, we can stop this vicious cycle of it just being consumer driven ideals without caring about what the products are going to do to people and their health. Right. Bed sheets, mattresses, things that you, you know, you're sleeping. I mean, shower filters, so, I mean, I just, I, the, my latest one is my mattress. I got an organic mattress cover, wow. all of that mattress sheet, you know, all of that. But you're right. I mean, if you're you know, absorbing all of that, all, you know, while you're in one position for hours, I mean, may as well make it organic and, and clean. And uh, well, the shower filter has been a big game changer. I just moved to this new place and I didn't have my shower filter in yet. Just three showers in, that was kind of my hair texture was a little, uh, you know, different. And um, yeah. yeah, you know, it's a big, uh, you know, but it's like you said, just be just little, you know, hints here and there and just uh, tips on things, just kind of pointing people towards, but you know, you, you give a nice way of explaining it. And uh, also your, your story just really backs it up as well. And just, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to just. It is. You know. I like your blog too. I think you mentioned in your like top five tips about the shower head and the person that taught me about it, getting a clean shower head was the food babe. I don't know if you know Vonnie at all, but Vonnie Hari. Yeah. She's a good friend. She's she was one of the early people that inspired me, and that was one of the that really opened my mind to like the shower and you know pretty much everything. What my yoga mat like? She really helped me to start questioning. So you know that, that's what I really love is that there's a lot of us out there voicing, and I think that if we just can keep this up, then we can change the narrative. And you know, I'm from Philly. Are you kidding me? Like I'm like working girl, but worse the makeup and the toxic stuff I packed on like at least five eyeshadows on every eye. I can't believe I've been fortunate enough not to like ruin my face and my skin and have enough time to, because you know, people tell me all the time, you have such beautiful skin. And I'm like, I think it's my diet lifestyle and the products that I use. Cause what I was using before was 
like full of chemicals and I was rubbing it, putting it on my lips. Like think about how, you know, and even like perfumes. Yeah. I mean, so the worst, I mean, just right there in the bloodstream, the lips, yep. I mean, no, in the area, I mean, people understand it's absorbed within seconds into your bloodstream. And I mean, oh, the big wow. deodorants and man, a, a friend of mine washed my, my sweatshirt recently. And I, I don't know what it was probably uh, just a big name brand, but I, oh. my face sw- uh, swelled up and I still, I've washed it in pure baking soda, uh, rinsed it uh, four times. Now it's still there. I mean, I, I, that's all I you know used to wash myself with in college. And stuff. Right. So, Man, I'm so glad I don't do that anymore. But it's it's very apparent now that I'm so clean with my products and things like that. that man, that one I was just rocked because it crosses a blood brain barrier. I mean, you're you're really getting in there with those neurotoxins, like you said. So, uh, man, it's uh, it's good though. I mean, we're, we're, the word is spreading. I remember when I was first starting uh, my company, or well, just starting this. The reason why I started is because there was always some type of hole in products. But now, green beauty uh, spreading. There are so many beautiful brands. Yeah. Out- Audacity is a great one that I look up to. She's got a kick-ass story, overcame cancer. Uh, what else? Uh, that uh, Vintner's daughter is great. There's there are a lot of them, but, but you know it's just expanding. That's beautiful. There's enough to go around. And I'm glad we're doing it. So. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a fan. I'm hey. a fan. Uh, I've been using it. What's that? I've been using it exclusively since I've been using it exclusively for a month, and I can tell you, even the last house I was at, their daughter who swims on the national swim team and she's young. She literally was just like, your skin is amazing. Your skin. I mean, she must, she kept telling me this is an 18 year old. And I'm like, wow, I've never really had an 18 year old pay attention to my skin before, but thank you. Like people are just coming out of the woodwork talking to me about my skin. Cause that's a big compliment. Is there to be a hundred percent honest? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I was like, wow. That's cool. That, you know, yeah. And even her mother was like, she just can't get over. She keeps saying, her skin is just so amazing. And I'm like, well, here's what I, you know, this is it here. Try it, you know, like, but, um, and then I hug everyone. Pardon me. Give her a little, a couple of little uh, pumps of the moisturizer. Yeah. A little pumps. And then I hug everyone and people are always like, Oh, you smell good. I, I don't know how I think that scent that you have is the most perfect scent in the entire world. Thank you. It's, uh, we, I cannot tell you how excited we are to release that. It's, uh, it, it's, it's very, it's very, it's probably the most, uh, special product to me because it, it's, it took, it's been a year and three weeks on the bottle. The formula alone, 126 tweaks, 21 six piece revision. Wow. On the formula. That's on the formula. Then the bottle. I mean, I'm telling you, I, but I wasn't gonna, you know, you, you know how it is when you want, when you know exactly what you want. Uh, I, I obsess over these things for sure. I signed off on it twice, like, and then recanted, <laughs> and then you know turned it into the lab ready, and I just kept stewing over it, pacing back and forth in my kitchen, like, ah, it's not there. And then I'm so glad I did because wow. just before we went into production on it, um, I they gave me a, a sample to to approve before it went into quarantine, and I went it was just a little too baby powdery. And then we went back to the drawing board for like months. It's just, it, this, it's, it's awesome. Thank you for, you know, not giving up because it's awesome. And, and literally I hug every person that I meet and, you know, they're like, Oh, you smell good. I'm like, I know. Right. I mean, <laughs> universal. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, we got to get yeah. you some more. We, we, we just, America's uh, smelling me. I can tell you that. It's <laughs> awesome. We got organic alcohol, fragrant oils, and water. That's it. Everything wow. free. So it's very well, proud. That's probably why it lasts so long. Like I could put it on in the morning and smell it all day. That's good to hear because that's what a lot of those big brands put in yeah. are synthetic ingredients to make it make the stain power uh, longer. But I, I know for a fact that you know we, we've done uh, blind tests. We've done you know just random testing with big names. Some of my fra- favorite, former favorite uh, fragrances. Uh, and it's, it's right there with them. Um, sometimes a little bit long, or like a little bit longer than some of the other big brands. And we didn't have to use any of the, I forget what it is. Uh, Albers. It's, it's really disgusting. Some of the, the product or the ingredients that they put in for uh, stain power, but we didn't do it. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to just get the pack, like just hold it in my hand with like when it's full. Right. And, I mean, right now it's just every, with like custom components, you know, every part of it from different places all around the world. And, uh, man, I cannot wait to hold that in my hand. 
Yeah, it's pretty special. When um, in 1996, I opened an aromatherapy store, believe it or not, and um, and I won awards and people thought I was a head shop. Like they didn't get aromatherapy back then. And I'm just so grateful to see that like, you know, you're making your product, like, you know, again, the, the education, the progression. I mean, now, obviously, a lot of people are diffusing essential oils, but we're, you're taking it one step further and putting it in skincare, putting it in fragrance rather than synthetics. And like, I can't even, I don't ever go anywhere recycled. Um, I'm one of those people mm. new. But if I walk through a mall and I smell, oh. I get sick like instantly. Yeah. Oh, I can't take it. Me too. I can't. Um, it's it really, I mean, I get now why back when I was acting, they request that the actors wouldn't wear deodorant, I don't know, I don't know about deodorant, but fragrances to auditions. And I thought that was so um, weird. Was like, whatever, I'm wearing Mark by Mark Jacobs. I'm sure they're going to like it, but I, I get it. I mean, it, you know, you come across a very strong perfume that your body doesn't agree with. I mean, it's going to put you, it's, it's really nauseating. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's yep. the, the, the word that comes to mind. And it's, I mean, yep. the lift, I mean, whenever I take lifts to the airport or whatever, they have this like company scent. It's like Abercrombie. I don't know oh, why, I them, but it's, you hop in the back and it's just like immediately window down, both of them. I'm like, sorry, sir, you cold. <laughs> like, oh, the, whatever you spray, it's, it's giving me a headache, dude. It's so true. I never yeah. even thought about that, but it is like the lift scent. Man. It sounds like something on Seinfeld that Kramer would come up with, you know? Yeah, yeah that's a Saturday Night Live skit waiting to happen for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, you know, V, I, I, when you come down here in 16 days, we got to meet up, grab lunch. We did. All right. And, and uh, I got to we'll meet at the Bulletproof Cafe. That's where we should meet. Done. Done. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, I really right. appreciate you joining me. And I, from the bottom of my heart, I, I think what you're doing is just so cool. Thank it's you so fun. much. And it's, I can see it. You're just, you know, you're vibrant, you know. And uh, yeah, really, I really, feel very blessed. Yeah, you are. Me too. And, I am. Yeah, thanks for for sharing your story. I mean, um, and, and uh, thank where, you. Where can people find you? Uh, like, uh, as far as Instagram, obviously Facebook, and. Um, what, are you on Twitter? Yeah, Paleo Boss Lady everywhere. I mean, the places where you can find me most active will be Instagram and on Facebook. And then I have a website with a newsletter and a blog. I love your blog. I really do. I read a lot in your blog. I really do love it. Um, you know, the you know, those are the kind of things that, you know, I hope that people find, you know, valuable because I just share my journey in real time and throw out tools, not because that's what I want other people to do. I just want to inspire them. Like I hula hoop for cardio. Like I just want to inspire people to think outside of the box. If you're not a runner, you know, you can do a hula hoop and you'll break a sweat. Trust me, you know, like, so yeah. I just want to inspire people to find their journey. And you'd loosen yeah. up that little back a little bit. I do something similar yeah. to hula hooping in the morning, but I definitely hula hooping, just put it this way, hula hooping looks a lot better than what I do in the morning, but got to loosen up that little back. <laughs> But uh, so I'll have to see what you do in the morning. I'll, well, I'll hula hoop and you can show, I'll get a hula hoop on you yet. That's it's it. Fun. We're going to be hula hooping at the Bulletproof Cafe. It's, it's not like Venice would be surprised. No, no, that's, that's, that's the norm over there, right? Right next to that, that clown uh, riding. Or clown something. building, yeah. Random CVS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank the you. Old so hood. Thank and, you. And you have a great weekend. I'll see you soon, okay? I can't wait. Thank you, Andy. Uh, thank you. Bye.